May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Okay. It's the big day in the church. We have a baptism this morning, which is always awesome. Um, it's also the first Sunday in Advent, um, doing some new music. I get really excited. This is, this is my sad, and I get to turn the page to year C, because it's the new year in the Christian church. Pretty exciting. Possibly just me, but that's okay. Okay. But Fallon is getting impatient, so we're gonna go, I'm going to go fast. Um, uh, one of the things... Advent is probably one of my favorite seasons, and there seems to be almost a paradox to the themes of Advent. On one hand, this is one of the most hopeful and exciting and joyful times in the Christian year when we're waiting the coming of Christmas time. Um, something special seems to be happening, even in the secular world. Everything kind of gets special and different, and uh, it's, it's, it's just a joyful time of year. At the very same time, throughout the Christian calendar, and we're seeing it in the scripture we heard this morning, and we're seeing in our hymns, there's also a, a theme of uh, fear, of uh, anticipation, of uh, lots of images of the end of the world. Um, are you ready? Uh, lots of very frightening things about uh, the heavens being shaken and the earth uh, being shaken and the moon and the stars and lots of, you know, cosmic disaster. How do we reconcile these two seeming paradoxes? Well, of course, Fallon is a great image. We reconcile that um, in the same way that every parent, every expectant parent reconciles those two things. When Joseph and Mary discovered uh, that they were pregnant... Just like every other couple, it's joyful, it's exciting, uh, you call everybody, it's, it's a thrilling time, and it's also a fearful time. Am I going to be able to do this? Am I ready? Is my family going to be able to help me? Is the world the kind of world that I want to bring up a child into? Is there something in this world that maybe I can change, change for my child? Because this world seemed a lot safer when it was just me. And now that I have a baby, the world suddenly seems really dangerous. And there are themes that are dark and inappropriate when before they were kind of cool and edgy. It's a fearful time. And at the very same time, in complete harmony with that fear, is joy and expectation. And that's what this season is like. So what do we do as Anglicans? Well, one, because we're all Christians, we can all, in a sense, share with Joseph and Mary and think to ourselves about things in this world that we might um, want to change for this new Jesus who's coming into our midst. But there's a lot of tangible things that we can do. Um, our, the secular world um, very earnestly suggests we buy lots of stuff. You can try that out if you want. I don't know how well it's going to work for you, but you can do your best. Buy lots of gizmos and gadgets and whatever else. Uh, as the priest in this place, I'm going to suggest prayer as an alternative. Uh, we've changed the music this, this Sunday and for, for, throughout Advent. and it, The theme of the music is, is monastic. Uh, the reason why that music is so appropriate for this time is, unlike every other genre of music, including all the classical music, it's music that's not meant to summon up how we feel, but to take us away from our thoughts, take us away from our emotions and our feelings, and be still. And maybe if we're still for long enough, we might be able to be with God. That was the sincere belief of, of that, uh, the monastic tradition for, for thousands of years. That was the tradition. We need music to quiet our hearts and quiet our minds so that God can speak to us. So we're trying it out together. But I want to suggest this Advent season, and I promise, Colin, I'm wrapping up really fast. What I want us to try this Advent season is take some time to get away. 
whether it's away from your thoughts and your feelings and your fears and your hopes, and be quiet and be still, whether it's getting in a car and driving, whether, who knows, I don't know, you all have your own things that you do. I used to go to a, to a quiet park when I was in London, Ontario. I kept finding different ways of getting away every place I went. I'm sure lots of you, perhaps most of you, have done something similar. You have tricks and techniques for getting away so you can have time to be alone with your thoughts and alone with God and maybe even away from your thoughts themselves to hear what God has to say to you this season. So I recommend that this season be one of those times where you find a way to get away from not just where you are, but get away from yourself and hear what God has to say to you. This is the best season for that. Alan might be an expert right now at this stage. He's gotten away from herself and is meditating upon a shoe. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so... So we'll leave you with the wise meditative practices of, of Fallon this morning. Okay. Amen.